India's top wrestlers and Olympians might return their medals if the man they are accusing of sexual harassment is not arrested. Hi, I'm Achra Solanki and you're watching CNBC TV 18 Newsreel. Here's my cover story. Wrestlers protesting at Delhi's Jantar Mantar have alleged that they were manhandled by Delhi police last night, a claim that has been denied by the police department. The protesters who are demanding action against the Wrestling Federation of India Chief and BJP MP Bridge Bhushan Singh have threatened to return their medals if they don't get justice. The WFI chief is facing serious allegations of sexual harassment. Meanwhile, the Supreme Court has closed the proceedings on a plea by three women wrestlers after noting that FIRs have been registered and the seven complainants have been provided adequate security. All right, let's get you the latest of the Go First crisis. The airline has now extended its flight cancellation till May 9th and has stopped fresh ticket sales till May 15th. It has also assured passengers that a full refund will be issued to them soon. This comes at a time when some passengers who had already booked their tickets complained that the airline is not giving them a full refund. Meanwhile, the National Company Law Tribunal has reserved its orders on the airline's plea, seeking protection under an interim moratorium. Now, this is a story that most of the employees and their bosses will relate to. Now, Google employees are unhappy about their boss Sundar Pichai's paycheck, and they're using memes to register their protest. Amid massive cost-cutting measures and slashing jobs of at least 12,000 employees across verticals, it turns out that Alphabet Inc. CEO Sundar Pichai has taken home an annual compensation package of about $226 million, which is more than 800 times the median employee's pay. The employees have taken to internal platforms to voice their disapproval with many circulating memes comparing Pichai's compensation to other CEOs who took pay cuts amid job losses in 2022. Now, this story concerns those who have recently invested in electric vehicles in India. A CNBC TV18 news break has been confirmed. Ola Electric and Ather Energy have announced that they will reimburse customers who bought a portable charger to comply with the government's fame sus subsidy scheme. Arthur Energy will refund 95,000 customers to the tune of 140 crore rupees. Ola Electric will refund 1 lakh customers about 130 crore rupees. Hero Moto and TVS Motors will also make refunds. Once the payments are made, the government will release the subsidies that have been withheld so far. All right, uh, gold prices hit an all-time high as the upward momentum for the yellow metal continues. Weakness in the US dollar and safe haven buying have pushed global prices to nearby $2,100 per ounce. In India, prices touch 61,400 rupees per 10 grams. Gold futures are trading at a 14-month high. Meanwhile, IT Major will soon be giving the pink slip to 3,500 employees. Not only this, the company will also be giving up 11 million square feet in office space to bring the cost down further. The company will also reduce its real estate costs by eliminating 80,000 seats and 11 million square feet in large cities in India. This as a tech company projects a decline in revenue in 2023. The big national headline that we are tracking is from Manipur, where protests by a tribal group over a court order on scheduled tribe status turned violent. The Indian Army held a flag march in violence-hit areas like Imphal, Churanchanpur and Kangpokpi. Curfew has been imposed across most districts and mobile internet services have been suspended. Nearly 9,000 people have been rescued and given shelter in army camps and government office premises in various areas of the state following the violence. The two-day foreign ministers' meet of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization has begun in Goa. Ministers from China and Russia are in attendance. Bilawal Bhutto has become the first Pakistani foreign minister to visit India since 2011. Meanwhile, Indian External Affairs Minister S.J. Shankar kicked off his bilateral talks with Russian foreign minister and his Chinese counterpart. In a setback to Bihar Chief Minister, the Patna High Court has directed the state government to stop the caste based survey in the state with immediate effect. The High Court further directed the government to ensure the safety of the data collected by the government so far. This comes amid a debate over a caste census in India that has intensified in recent months. The central government, however, has rejected the demand for a caste census. Now, this is a story that you need to watch. You won't believe, but today was the coldest May morning in 41 years in Delhi. 
while May is supposed to be the hottest month of the year. Delhi woke up to an unusual episode of a foggy morning. Since the past few weeks, parts across the country have witnessed cool and rainy weather. Delhi residents spammed social media with photos of fog blanketing the city's skyline. Another spell of rain is likely Friday onwards as for the weather department. After Russia claimed an attempt was made to assassinate President Vladimir Putin by Ukraine, it has now pinned the blame on the US. The allegation comes less than 24 hours after Moscow claimed to have stopped a drone strike on the building that serves as the centre of the country's administration and Putin's apartment, a claim that Kyiv has firmly refuted. Is COVID-19 still an emergency under the World Health Organization rules? To answer this question on everyone's mind, a panel of global health experts will meet today to decide if the status that helps maintain international focus on the pandemic should remain or not. The WHO first gave COVID its highest level of alert on January 30th back in 2020 and the panel has continued to apply the label ever since at meetings held every three months. However, a number of countries have recently begun lifting their domestic states of emergency, such as the United States. Sticking to COVID, let's talk about the first person who documented the initial COVID outbreak in the Chinese city of Wuhan, Fang Bin. He's known as the whistleblower. Now, he's been released from jail. Remember, he disappeared three years ago while reporting on the coronavirus. And he was later revealed to have been detained by the Chinese authorities. He remains under strict supervision back in his home in Wuhan. Now, are you also feeling the heat of expensive olive oil? Olive oil prices are at a record high in top producing countries, Spain, thanks to a prolonged drought. The oil prices are projected to last for some time. A long drought has pushed olive oil prices to a 26 year high. And uh, this is the latest and experts say this is going to continue as the consumption has increased in the recent past. All right, now to my favorite bit of the show, the news that made us smile. In times of war and aggression, here's an example of dog diplomacy. Turkey gifted a German shepherd to Mexican army, basically a search puppy in memory of a Mexican rescue dog who died while helping find earthquake survivors in Syria. The dog has been named Arkadas, that means friend in Turkish.